Hi, and welcome back. Great to see you're still on board. This will be a bug fixing and improvements video because there are two things which I basically want to fix or improve. One is related to data loader, which we added in the last video of this series. And uh, one is an issue, not really an issue, but something we can improve that has been in our code for uh, a couple of videos already. So let's dive in and let's make sure we can slowly but steadily finish up this project. So what do I want to change? The app as we have it here actually works just fine. If you do log in here, you can use all the different parts of it without any issues. That all works and it's good and data loader is doing its job and reduced the amount of round trips we do. But there still is an issue with this application as we have it. And that can be seen when we actually don't use the frontend, the React frontend, but if we have a look at the app.js, we visit slash GraphQL with a GET request and therefore we use Graphical, this uh, testing tool for our GraphQL API. So if I visit localhost slash GraphQL, which is the URL to Graphical, then here we can write any GraphQL query we, we want. And we used Graphical earlier in this uh, series already, so you might still know that. Now here let me show you which issue we currently have. If I get my events, so let's say I get the IDs, that just works. Now let's say I also get information about the creator, like the, um, let's see, the email maybe. That also works. But now let's say for every creator, we want to know which events this person created. So I'll get the created events here, and there for every event, the title. Doesn't really matter what you fetch there. Now we actually get an error. Cannot read property get of undefined. And this is related to a bug which I introduced in the last video. There, I add a data loader in the merge.js file, here with event loader and user loader, and we use the load method to load, for example, a related event here, or to batch all these event requests together in this case. Now, for created events, I use event loader load, and then I pass my user created events. Now, the issue here is, first of all, we shouldn't use load here, but I actually want to load multiple uh, items here. I pass an array of uh, event IDs here, not a single event. And therefore, instead of load, this should be load many. Now, it still would not work, though, if we use it like this. And the reason for that is simply related to how the this keyword behaves in JavaScript. Binding this in the load many function to the same uh, reference or object this refers to in this function will not work. And therefore it's wrong to use event loader load many bind here. But what we can do is we can simply wrap this in anonymous function call. So this is an anonymous uh, arrow function where we then execute event loader load many without bind and therefore without passing this as an argument. So I just call load many here, but not directly when this code gets parsed, when this function gets executed, but inside of this anonymous function, which I store in the created events uh, field here. And therefore, whenever I fetch created events, I execute this function, I call event loader load many, I leave this, the this keyword as it is in load many without rebinding it, and therefore this will work. Now with that, if I save that, if I execute that same query here, you see now that looks way better and I get back an array of created uh, events for my user. This is test at test.com and we see test2 at test.com only has one event, for example. So now this is the bug fixed, which I introduced in the last video. Now that's the bug, but there also is something else which I want to improve and that is related to our front end. There, for example, in our... Uh, not, not here in the pages. For example, on the bookings page, we are of course making HTTP requests to our backend. And I'm doing this here by sending a post request manually. Now, as a side note, you could of course use libraries for that. You could use Apollo client. You could also set up the backend with Apollo server. And I'm just doing this all without libraries to show you what's happening under the hood. That's the only reason definitely use libraries for your projects. I just want to show you everything that is happening. Now, when you're sending your request like this with your own post request, 
Well, then in cases where you also add data, like here, where we uh, inject some uh, dynamic information into our request definition, there is a better way of doing that. Instead of injecting it here, which of course works fine, it is recommended to not inject it here, but instead add a reference in your GraphQL query, which starts with a dollar sign and then any name you want. For example, booking ID, but you could name this book ID or just ID, whatever you want. And I'll use ID so that you are not confusing it with this booking ID name here. But you can use any name you want here, the dollar sign is important though. Now that alone will not do the trick though. You also now have to give your query or mutation in this case here a name. And I'll name it cancel booking. That name is also up to you. And here you define which kind of data will be used inside of your mutation. There you should repeat that argument you're using here. So dollar sign ID in my case. And if you named it differently, you have to name it differently up here as well. And then you also assign a type here which in my case here is ID and this is required, it must not be null. So you might of course know that notation here, especially the type notation from the schema. In the GraphQL schema, we also work with types like this and indeed we work with exactly the same types here. Now with that being named, we're basically telling GraphQL, hey, there will be a variable named ID which actually contains the dynamic value you're expecting here. And now it's our job to pass in that variable. Now how does that work? You simply pass more into your request body. Please note that thus far we only have that query field. And maybe you wondered why we need that, why we don't just send that string as a request body. Well, we need it because actually we're not limited to sending just the query. You can add another field in this request body object here, which should be named variables. Variables is another JavaScript object where you now have key value pairs where your keys have to match the names you have in here without the dollar sign and the values, well, are the values you want to pass in. So here I add ID as a variable and then I set this equal to booking ID. And now this will send a request to the backend which can be parsed by the backend because our express GraphQL server will in the end uh, parse the incoming request for a query field and for a variables field. And it will then be merged together on the backend. So this ID here will basically be added into this query uh, expression here on the backend you could say. So therefore now if I save this, we should still be able to cancel a booking. If I do quickly log in again, go to bookings and I click cancel here. That looks good. It is gone. And if I log back, back in just to check, yeah, it really is gone. So canceling still works. And this is how you can add variables or how you should add variables. So any dynamic values into your GraphQL queries. So let's have a look at our queries we have. Uh, here for fetching bookings, I'm not passing any dynamic data, so no need to add variables here. And therefore, I think we're done with the bookings. But of course, we got more variables here in off.js, for example. When I do log in, you see here we got email and password. Well, we should replace that, for example, with dollar sign $email and with dollar sign password. Please also note that I removed the quotation marks. You don't need them anymore when using this syntax. Now we need to give this a name, like create user, whatever you want. And I define that I'll have an email, whoops, dollar sign email variable in there, which will be of type string. And I'll have a dollar sign password variable in there, which will also be of type string. And both are required and must not be null. And uh, with that, just as before, we add this new variables field here, have an object. And there our email refers to the email variable we get. So this constant basically which we extract and we'll do the same for password. So here I also pass in password. And now just to make sure this is not uh, confusing, email here in front of the colon has to match the name you chose here in your GraphQL query. So with the dollar sign, but down there without the dollar sign and email on the right side of that colon, that simply refers to the value we want to pass in, which here is our email constant. It's the same for password with the password constant.
So now we have that query using our variables. Now for creating a user, uh, for logging in, excuse me, it's the same. Now this is a query, not a mutation, but still you can give it a name. And there I want to have an email, which is of type string and a required string. I'll also have a password, which is a also required string. And then here we use dollar sign email. And here we use dollar sign password. And just as before, we should now add our variables object and set email to email and password to password. So essentially the same we did for logging in. Now we got that create user and login query adjusted. Let's uh, quickly give it a try as this reloads. Let's try logging in. That looks good. And if I log out here and I authenticate again, or and this time I try to create a new user with uh, test free at test.com. Now I'm getting an error here actually. Let's uh, quickly see what's wrong here. User exists already. Well, okay, now let's try an uh, email that shouldn't exist. Yeah, that looks better. I got back a response that indicates that this succeeded. And therefore, now if I switch to log in, I can log in with that data. So this now works. Let's see what else we can change. That, of course, would be in the events.js file. And in here, for fetching events, we leave that as it is because we're not passing in any dynamic data. But up here, we got a query, a mutation for creating an event where we do pass in uh, dynamic data. So here we have a title, a description, a price, and a date. Obviously, that is a good uh, scenario for replacing that. So dollar sign title, dollar sign desk for description, dollar sign price, and dollar sign date. And with that changed here in the query string, let's give this mutation a name, create event, for example, and let's uh, set up our data in there. So we got dollar sign title, and that should be a string. Dollar sign desk should definitely also be a string, and both must not be null. Now for price and date, in case you're not sure, you can always check the schema. And there you see that for create event, we are expecting event input and event input has a price, which is a float and date, which is a string. So we should use these exact same types here. So dollar sign price will be a float here, a non null float. And then here date is a string, also not null. And as before, now we just have to add our variables field here, an object where I set the title equal to title. And with the title on the right side of the colon, I'm referring to my title constant I'm extracting here. And I'll do the same for price, date, and description. So desk. And here it should be desk because here I'm referring to the name I set up there in my query string. Desk will refer to description here. Price will refer to price. And then last but not least, I got the, yeah, the date, which will refer to date. So to the date constant up here. With that, this query is adjusted. Now, as I mentioned, for fetching events, we don't need to adjust anything. Here, for booking an event, we do, though. Let me cut this and replace that with dollar sign ID, maybe. And then here I have book event as a name. Dollar sign ID here will be an ID. And now, again, we should pass it in with variables. Whoops, we have our ID here. And now I use that expression, which I previously injected into the template literal. So these are all the queries here. Let's uh, give them a try. Here are the events. Uh, so loading the events works, which is good because we changed nothing there. Let me log in. And uh, now let me try to book this event here. Um, I think it works. Uh, it's the snow walk and we do see it here indeed. Uh, Cancelling also still works. Let's try creating a new event. Does this work for 199? Um, let's pick a date here. Uh, this one, 1420. Uh, it should work and confirm this. And this looks pretty good to me. 
Here is it. Does this work? Let's reload. It's still there. We can view the details. And of course, now we can also try to book that with another user. So let's uh, sign in with that user. And let's book our newly created event here. And we see it here under bookings. So that looks pretty good to me. This is the other refinement I wanted to add here. Now, obviously, you can refine way more on this app, especially here in the front end. You could add logic to store the token and check its validity when the app restarts to keep the user logged in. You can show more helpful error messages when you're trying to create a user which exists already. And these are all things you can definitely do, but they're not really what I want to focus on here in this series because it's not so much about React, but more about this basic GraphQL API we built. And therefore, we're almost done. Now, what's missing is, of course, the charts I promised to you. And for that, we will work towards that goal in the next videos. Hopefully, see you there. And I hope you liked the series thus far. Bye.